In this tutorial, we're going to look at events in Node.js and how you can use them when you're designing your programs. So events are commonplace within Node.js and they're used extensively by a lot of the other core modules. You could write quite a lot of Node.js code without actually understanding what's going on under the hood. So in this video, we're going to look at what an event actually is and then look at a few different examples. So let's create a new file and we can just call it events.js. And there is actually an events module that we can require and then use in our programs. So events actually exist in the browser as well. So if you think about user interaction, such as clicking a button or filling out a form, you usually attach listeners to those events. But because we're on the server side, we don't need to worry about dealing with user interaction directly. It's more likely that we'll have been passed some user input from the front end and then dealing with it with our Node.js code. So let's take an example scenario of users logging into a system. So I'm going to create a variable just called users logged in and assign that a value of zero. And then I'm going to create something called an event emitter. So this creates a new object from the events module, which enables us to send event messages. So in the same way that we'd add an event listener within the browser to a button, let's create a new event listener for our event emitter. So the function we need to reference on our event emitter is the on function, and that takes two parameters, first the name of the event, and then a function to be called when the listener receives notification of that event. So I'm just going to put a string in here, and I'll say user logged in. So this is the name of our event and I've just made this up, it could be anything when you're creating a custom event. But because our example is around users logging in, it seems like a good name for it. And in the function that gets called, let's do two things. First of all, I'm going to increment the number of users that are logged in. And then just log a message to the console. So if I save the file and actually run the code now, you can see we didn't get any output on the console. And that's because for the listener that we set up on the event emitter object, we actually need to generate an event. And we can do that by calling another function on the event emitter object, which is simply emit, and then we give it an event name that we want to trigger. So if we run the events program again, so now the event function actually gets called and the console.log shows us how many users are logged in. So we can use that emit function to send messages to any listeners that are set up on the event emitter object. So as I mentioned previously, this is how a lot of the node core modules are written. And if you head over to the Node.js website and click on the about tab, you'll see the description of Node.js might make a little bit more sense to you now. As you can see, one of the key things that they point out about Node.js is that it's event driven, which basically means that a lot of the code just sits there waiting for events to be triggered before further action is taken, just as we saw in our user logged in example. And we can illustrate this with something that we've already seen in the previous lesson. When we looked at the file system watch function, so the watch function itself emits several different events, one of which is change. So I've saved the result of the fs.watch function inside a variable called watcher. So now if I write watcher.on in the same way when we set up our event listener before and listen for the change event. So let's call a function when we do receive that change event. And now if we run our code again, you can see if we make any changes to the events.js file, the fs.watch function actually emits a change event, which is picked up by our watcher.on change event listener. So this just demonstrates how a lot of the core modules have got events built in. And if you look at the documentation for the modules on the Node.js website, you'll see a list of events that you can actually listen for and incorporate into your own programs. So a module that really makes use of the event system within Node.js is the HTTP and NET modules. And we'll take a look at those in the next lesson.